Hello, I'm Mel McGinnis, and though I am not America's anchorman like Rush Limbaugh, still I can bring to you the Sophie Scholl Society, the society that talks about religion and politics in the same breath. That society goes all the way back to Nazi Germany when Sophie Scholl and her friends were in the White Rose Society and combine theology, philosophy, as political engagement in that environment where it was very risky to do so even at the point of them losing their lives because of their faith-based approach to politics. And here in our society today, we can't help but be confronted by those issues that are not only undermining the church, but are undermining society. Today I have with me Jeff Short. We've done a lot of apologetic things together, and today we're going to take an up-close look at the church in transgender Babylon. The Church in Babylon, a book written by Dr. Erwin Lutzer, talks about the church being exiled, not so much geographically, but spiritually and morally in the society we see today. And I'm going to make a statement, or I'll read a paragraph, and then Jeff and I uh, will discuss it. At an ultra-leftist state-funded university, that is the University of California at Berkeley, an interviewer asked students how many genders there are. 72 plus infinite. Ah, it's made up. We're just a sampling. When the Bible plainly and clearly tells us there are two, male and female, George Orwell couldn't be closer to the truth when he's quoted as saying, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Deceit abounds in a PC culture where basic facts of biology are unacceptable for the untruthful narrative of the agenda-driven left. Jeff, first thoughts as you hear that paragraph. Well, I feel sorry for young people today. Uh, when I was growing and go, uh, learning in school, I never had to be confused about male and female. Uh, I never had all of this gender ideology. Um, I never had all of the confusion that young people are facing today in high school and especially in college. So uh, I really feel bad for the young people. And I think as Christians, we're going to have to come up with a way to help them uh, navigate through this water because it is so confusing for them. We're seeing already the results of the confusion and, you know, just like you said, 72 plus genders and Facebook and Google are always expanding categories. And it's just a confusing mess. And the future is going to be pretty bleak unless the young people today can figure this out. A confusion, a toolbox, a tool of the uh, devil's yes. uh, toolbox. Yes. And when you think something as basic as male and female... Uh, is now being called into question. Right. It goes back to the undermining of Genesis. Yes. Because oh, yeah. the school system, the leftist oriented education system, right. rejects God as creator. And right. lo and behold, they reject God defining marriage right. being between a man and a woman. And now they reject the basic biological categories of right. male and female. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's on such a fundamental level, and, and it's such a foolishness on such a profound level. I never thought I would actually see the day where people were teaching kids that they really couldn't know or that it's all up in the air as to what their gender is, what their sex is. But today, that has come, and it's a reality. And I think as adults, we may not realize how bad it is because we're not there in the classroom. We're not there in the college uh, classroom. But I think if we were to look deeper, we would find that it's a lot worse 
than we're actually aware of, which and, is a scary thought. And I think you're right. I just saw a video last night of a sex ed program in Canada talking to kids about uh, their gender and how they may not be what their biology says they are. So when you start making statements like that, you are casting confusion into the minds of the youth. Already confused. I mean, you, youth is already a, a confusing time. Uh, children are already confused. But to add to that confusion by making things more confusing uh, on such a basic level is just really absurd. So we are really heading into some pretty dark times. We are, and it's interesting. Uh, we see Orwell's statement uh, really at the forefront of what we're talking about because he said in a, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Right. The Bible tells us the truth, right. but people are so convinced in their deceit, even now simply saying there's male and female is a revolutionary act. Right, that's a crime now. Yeah. Uh, in discussing the transgender issue, Andrew Walker and Denny Burke properly asked, why is it acceptable to surgically alter a child's body to match his sense of self, but bigoted to try to change his sense of self to match his body? In other words, it's politically correct, according to the left, to change a male's body into a female type in order to match his female feelings, but it is bigoted of you to try to change a male's female feelings with thoughts that match his right. male body. All right. It doesn't make any sense. Right. And today, it's as if logic must be ignored reason and common sense have no say, right. and there's no such thing as absurdity anymore. Right. It's almost to the point where you can't make up any kind of satire. You can't lampoon anything because it's actually a reality. So you're trying to make fun of something, but the people are being offended because they're actually believing that. And, and it's the same thing with this. Um, you know, in Romans, it talks about, you know, they suppress the truth. I mean, that's what that's what we're seeing. We're seeing someone like in a big swimming pool and they have all of these uh, rubber balls and they're trying to hold those balls under the water and they keep popping up. And that's the problem with this gender ideology. It's just it won't stay put. It, it, and, and it's a futile effort to try to keep uh, it suppressed because it's going to at some point, I'm hoping our society will get to the point where people will just get so tired of this stupidity. They'll just say, forget that, and throw it all out of the schools, throw it out of the universities. I hope I live to see that day, but I don't see it right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like what you said uh, with respect to uh, referring to Romans. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. Thinking themselves wise, right. they have become fools. fools. Yep. And I think Thomas Sowell made a statement of now, in addition to having artificial intelligence, we have artificial stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> and we see this with the issue of transgender. Uh, finally, one quote here by Dr. Erwin Lutzer, who wrote the book, The Church in Babylon. Does a man who has a healthy arm surgically remove it because he doesn't feel it's a rightful part of his body? Does he have a body problem or a mind problem? Does a woman who has anorexia and starves herself to death have a body problem or a mind problem? When a man who is 52 years old identifies as a six-year-old, does he have a body problem or a mind problem? It's deeper than a mind problem. It's a spiritual, spiritual problem. problem. Right, right. Ultimately spiritual problem. Rebellion against the Lord God. Yeah. Wanting to make up the rules themselves and instead of living in the created world that God created, they want to be the God of the universe and change the rules or try to change the rules. They can't change the rules, which unfortunately we're kind of like in this lab experiment 
and they're tinkering with everything. And unfortunately, we're the guinea pigs in here and we have to sort of live in the society while it's being experimented with, unfortunately. And we're gonna see that the experiment fails and we as a society are going to have to pay for that. And that's just where we're at. And unfortunately, a lot of the payment is being done in the form of child, bo uh, child abuse in the name yes, of therapy abuse. for this whole transgender movement. I think it's movement. child abuse. Well, I, I, mean, do, I think I do it's it too. clearly categorized as child abuse. When you, when you try to tell people that they're not male or female and that there's some kind of uh, range that they can be and they get to choose. And I think that's child abuse. Yep, absolutely. But it's revolutionary for you to say something like that. Well, I appreciate Jeff being with me here on this edition of the Sophie Scholl Society. And unlike Tony Kornheiser of Pardon the Interruption says, I cannot promise you that I'll do better the next time. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>